Are you an aspiring Jedi, or do you dabble with the dark side of the Force? Regardless of whether you fancy yourself a Defender of the Light or an aspiring Sith Lord, you're going to need a lightsaber. Podcast Stardust is pleased to partner with Saber Masters, the creators of high-quality, durable, and affordable lightsabers. Saber Masters is preparing to launch the Ultimate Lightsaber 2.0, and right now you can get two for the price of one. So, check out the link in our show notes and go get your Ultimate Lightsabers from Saber Masters. And don't forget to use our referral code STARDUST to save $10 at checkout. And each purchase using our referral code helps support Podcast Stardust. Hey, this is Katherine Tabor, Senator Padme Amidala from Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Jay and Dennis on Podcast Stardust. Stay on the light side. Hello and welcome to Podcast Stardust. This is the fully armed and operational podcast dedicated to Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion. I'm Dennis Keithley. And I'm Jay Krebs. Our coverage of the Acolyte begins today. But first, Jay, remind everybody where we can be found around the internet. All right. So we can be very easily found on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Stardust. All right. The dish is lying. The signal is boosted to max output. The shield is down. We are now broadcasting to the galaxy. So... Jay, this is the first time you and I are recording like a month because mm-hmm. I was on vacation and we recorded a whole bunch of stuff in advance with some friends uh, that we had had on for other episodes. They took around and recorded some bonus stuff. And then we did the Phantom Menace trivia episodes. We did our Rebel Moon discussion. But it's been a while. And, uh, you know, the Acolyte started uh, right half, you know, like in the middle of my vacation. And right. we got four episodes that have come out since then. So we're trying to play catch up. Uh, and so, yeah, first of all, so it's good to be back on the microphone talking stars with you. Absolutely. And, yeah. And the other thing is, is that it's probably apparent that my voice is not the same. At, yeah, I'm getting over a bug here. So thanks for sticking around and uh, putting up with this alternate Dennis voice. And I hope <laughs> by the time we're recording next week's episodes that I'm better on that. But uh, that's what's going on there. OK, but the Acolyte. So it's. We had a two episode premiere back on what June 4th, and we've had two more episodes since then. We're halfway through the series at this point. Um, we're gonna get into some non spoiler overall thoughts, and then we're gonna talk a bit about the episodes after that. So, uh, Jay, take it away. What did, what do you think of the series so far? Well, I got to watch the first two with my oldest son, which was definitely a treat because I only get to see him once every few months. And so we were super excited to be able to tune into this together. And the first two episodes were quite a wild ride indeed. And we were both kind of left like, what did we just see, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. And so just trying to dissect that. And he had absolutely no um, experience whatsoever with the High Republic. So he was coming into that completely fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, which was kind of cool to watch it with someone that had such a fresh perspective, you know, just kind of going into it completely without any, any prior knowledge whatsoever. And it kind of helped me a little bit as well, because of course, you know, with all of our previous discussions, we'd had such, you know, like raise the bar so high as far as what we were going to see and what we, what to expect and everything like that. And um, overall, the the series for me has been kind of a roller coaster ride. There's mm-hmm. been some things that I've really enjoyed and appreciated about it. And then there's other things that kind of fit like a new shoe that aren't very comfortable just yet and have kind of left me with a few blisters <laughs> is mm-hmm. the best way that I can explain it. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep my eyes open in terms of my, my, my overall outlook on things and giving it time, you know, because I know that we've been told that this series is going to be just when we thought it was one thing, it was going to be something else, which yes, it has been, but it hasn't settled well with me as well as I hoped that it would. And so in that way, 
I'm maybe disappointed in myself mm. um, in some ways that I'm, I don't like it as much as I had hoped that I would. But I mean, we've got a lot of acolyte left and there's definitely some awesome story beats in here. And I'm excited to talk about all of that. But overall, it's like I said, it's been kind of a roller coaster for me up and down a little bit. And um, and so I have to reconcile that. But mm -hmm. uh, what about you? So I like this quite a bit. It's a series that I really can't judge until I've seen the whole thing. And why is that? It's because it's a mystery. You know, mm -hmm. this this really is a big mystery as to what's going on. And we'll get into some of the details of what, about that mystery as we you know, once we kind of get past our non-spoiler thoughts here. The other thing that is kind of annoyed me a little bit with this show is that we were taught they hyped up the action that we were going to see and all this kung fu action stuff like that, and then they showed all of it to us in the trailers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know the past couple episodes you know that we've had have, have been action light on that, and so it was like, well, I hope. There's a lot of stuff that you haven't shown us in the like second half of the season because, uh, you know, you gave it all away otherwise in the trailer. So I'm hoping to see more of that. Um, but I do like the mystery. And, you know, at the moment, uh, you, you, it seems very straightforward. But again, they've been teasing that it's it's got levels. It's not going to go the way you think. And kind of talking about yourself about like adjusting your expectations. I remember when this show was first announced, it was not billed about the action. It was billed as a dark side mystery right on the, on the fringes of the high Republic. And I really wish they'd kind of stuck with that as their way of promoting the show, because that's what this has been. And I've been fascinated by some of the developments and thoughts and things that they're putting out there. And uh, we'll get into that as we go in discussion. So anyway, I like it. I'm glad I'm watching it. It's it's this absurd comparison I'm going to make right now. But I'm reminded of Andor because Andor was a very different type of Star Wars show. This is a different type of Star Wars show. It uses some of the same type of uh, techniques that George Lucas would use. The dialogue frequently reminds me of the way that George Lucas would write dialogue and have characters say things. It's kind of clunky at sometimes. Mm-hmm. But that makes it sound like Star Wars, if it's you know what true. I mean. Yep. So uh, at any rate, it's it's a very uh, different type of thing compared to all the other Disney Plus products that we've mm -hmm. had. Yeah. So. And to your point about the whole George Lucas thing, too, mm -hmm. I noticed even some of the the screen wipes and some of the mm -hmm. iris, you know, opening and closing between different scenes is very George Lucas-esque as well. Yeah. Lucasian, however people want to say it these days. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's the non-spoiler portion of this. Let's kind of get into some of the details. You know, our first episode opens with May. You know, this is a character that they've been building all along, this dark side type assassin looking person, showing up at a cantina and then beating up a whole bunch of people uh, to get at Jedi Master and Dara. And we see almost that entire fight, like I said a moment ago, in the trailers. We just don't see the final outcome, which is that May actually ends up killing Master and Dara because she throws a dagger at an alien and Dara stops with the force, which creates an opening for May. What'd you think about that with uh, Carrie Ann Moss's character biting the dust like right off the bat in the show? Well, yeah, that's one of the things that's like, what did we just see? Because mm -hmm. I totally did not expect that at all. Because, mm -hmm. you know, feeling like Indara was just going to be one of the, the main central characters throughout the the entire series but mm -hmm. what did you think well you know we've had an opportunity to see this character again in flashbacks in a later right. episode so that's great so i'm glad it was not just like hey thanks for coming on for 15 minutes of screen time yeah. or not even that but i got spoiled on this mm -hmm. which was so hard to do because you know, this show came out on the fourth and i didn't get a chance to see it until the 14th mm -hmm. and by that point it was very hard for me to open the internet let alone social media without getting some kind of a spoiler about that so sure. there was a lot of elements of the show that i just had to deal with spoilers. and hey you know what i was not giving up my vacation so that i couldn't be spoiled no. on a disney plus show <laughs> and i'm good with that uh but that being said you know it's the uh the fight was cool i still liked watching it, it was nice getting to see it like all in one chunk as opposed to broken up the way we had it mm -hmm. from all the different trailers and stuff like that but uh, it does establish some stakes very early on. 
It does indeed. Okay, but then the other big thing from this is that we realize or we learn that Amanda Stenberg is playing two characters in this show. That she's not just playing May, she's playing May's twin sister, Osha. And so we have a light side character and a dark side character. Um, I did see spoilers about that one too. And so, uh, and so I'll say this, I was surprised to learn that even though it was a spoiler, but how did that land with you when you were watching it? Well, I, after the fact, I had people that said, oh yeah, that was so obvious because one had short hair, the other one had long hair. Like how would, how could you not know that they were twins that was set up beforehand? So I was kind of left feeling like I did in The Last Jedi where, you know, silly me didn't realize that Luke was projecting a force vision of himself. And oh my gosh, I should have realized that his beard was shorter and da 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 da. Um, so it was almost kind of that that sort of mirrored image of that as well for me. But it was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've had so many instances of twins in Star Wars before. So I just felt like that was another kind of a, you know, ring theory sort of a thing, which was I thought a nice touch. And I was completely floored by it i did not expect it at all yeah okay so i wouldn't get down on yourself for not realizing that i mean you know we had no clue going into the show that she was playing two roles they only build the character of may i didn't see anything about osha mm -hmm. you know prior to the show coming out osha asha however you want to pronounce it and it is interesting i uh, you know the the evil twin thing seems a bit um daytime soapish but it works in the story especially when we get to the third episode yes. and they explain that background so i like that and um it does add an element to the mystery that we've got going throughout this series so far which we can talk about especially after it gets um developed a bit more but you know no all the promotional material about this was that you know they set in may up as the character that soul had trained some point and that soul wanted to bring in Mm -hmm. You know, and and, the, and that's not what that was at all. He wanted to bring in OSHA because, you know, that was his Padawan at one point. Um, but speaking of that, you know, we had an opportunity to see images of May in trailers and previews and things like that. But uh, Asha, OSHA, you know, she was a brand new character that, you know, they really did save for that first episode. What did you think about her? Oh, I just loved her. Honestly, I just thought she was she was kind of a, a mix between a Ray and um this character that i feel like we're going to see in the video game outlaws mm -hmm. and you know just this this kind of innocent if you will sort of character that was all about doing the right things but you know obviously had left for her own personal reasons mm -hmm. but what about you yeah. yeah no i like her too and i also like the co the costumes that they've been given these characters so yeah you know uh, maze i thought has always been cool it's some sort of japanese ninja samurai type of a costume which i think has always been great but asha's reminds me of like the high republic costumes that they had for the smuggler characters mm -hmm. and i remember talking about that with my boys is like did that look familiar to you does that look like it's straight out of the uh the old republic and they're like oh yeah yeah definitely so uh they did a good job with that and i don't think i think this was all put together absent shauna tripchick right yes so this is like one of the first projects where, you know, for Star Wars that she didn't get to work on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but still, they did a good job with the costume design despite that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then we get this new term, mechnic, out there. For someone, you know, that works out like on the hull of a ship in place of a droid. That was, uh, you know, and that just like rolls right off their tongues. Like they've been saying it forever. Right. And it was almost as if this was something that was like a thrill seeker kind of thing that only the like crazy people were mech necks because mm -hmm. who does this? That's why you have droids. Mm -hmm. And then the big action sequence after some of the fights is we get the crash of the prison ship and, you know, we get the, you know, the character defining moment for May when, you know, or not May, Asha, when you know, she's being held prisoner. The other prisoners want to escape. They're going to engineer this. She doesn't want any part of it. But then when they disable the droids and the ship's crashing, she has no choice. And she still goes back for the violent prisoner that is being sedated by that little creature over its mouth, only for that guy to get up and betray her and take the last escape pod on that. So 
What were your thoughts on the uh, the crash and escape? Didn't surprise me that these people that were on this prison ship would completely betray her and be all for themselves because, I mean, they're on a prison ship. Hello. And um, so, yeah, so that was not surprising to me whatsoever. And and again, it speaks to her OSHA's character in that it sets her up to be this compassionate, empathetic soul sort mm-hmm. of thing. So it worked. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, like in in later episodes we get some yin yang type imagery that's around especially around um, kennel naka's lair there there's some of that and it's like very much prevalent with asha and may you know may's wanting around murdering people asha's mm-hmm. doing the opposite you know may wears these dark clothing asha's sometimes is just like white you know not pure white or anything like that but you know uh, it's not like hit you over the head obvious but mm-hmm. it's very clear that they are setting these up as you know two different you know the yin and yang type you know even though they're twins and they have intertwined destiny they have uh, different motives and different morality coming down to it right and yeah. at one point in this episode and i can't remember exactly when it is maybe it was when she was fighting with indara mm-hmm. um is that may's marking on her head Mm-hmm. becomes apparent yeah. and so we know you know from the get-go that that's how the two of them are sort of identified indeed, indeed. in terms of being differentiated and then the end of this episode uh debuts or for the series anyway the the master is what they've been calling him or her or whoever you have no idea who this character is but standing up on a rock you know we've seen this imagery in the trailers uh you know it Knights the red lightsaber and it's saying to may that an acolyte kills without a weapon an acolyte kills the dream and what gets taken away from this in the other episodes is that may has to kill a jedi without using a weapon right is that too literal an interpretation of what this guy just said or is it that you know what he was saying is that it's not so much that you're killing a jedi you're killing a dream and you do that without a weapon does that make sense right that the weapon in in and of itself is not something that's tangible Mm -hmm. the the weapon is figuratively speaking that it kills hope it kills you know those kinds of things it kills the 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 light of the force so to speak is the way that i interpreted it yeah right the the point is is that it's not so much you're killing a person is you're killing an ideal you're killing a dream Mm -hmm. you're killing something there and that's something you accomplish without a lightsaber, without right. a dagger, right. without a knife. It's so, through the actions that you... But it, it seems mm-hmm. like they've been hung up on this whole notion that she has to kill a Jedi without using a weapon. Exactly. And so like when we get to the fourth episode here and they go to Korloff, whatever the name of that planet is, and she plans on killing Kanaka of bare hands. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, she's going to... Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? So... Right. All right, well, let's get into some more of the details from the second episode. And this is when May is going after Master Torben, who is played by Dean Charles Chapman. And he's taken the Barash vow. And he's Hello. on the planet of Yeah. And he gets there, or she gets there, May gets there, and she can't kill him. <clears throat> She's trying to throw punches. He's in meditation. None of them are landing. There's some sort of a force barrier. And then eventually she has Kamir. We get his premiere, uh, played by Manny Jacinto, to make a poison out of what are they the bunta leaves from her own planet mm-hmm. and she, she like doesn't even have to convince torben to take it he just snaps out his meditation and swallows the poison and dies on this yeah and he says to her it's like we we're doing what we thought was right okay so we don't really know the backstory yet at this point when this episode comes out but what'd you make of all this this did not sit well with me at all because when Jedi take the bearish vow, as we know, it's because they feel like they've done something that has separated them from what it means to be a Jedi. Mm-hmm. And so they go into this meditative stance until they feel that they've remedied that. But for me, a Jedi committing suicide because of a mistake that they felt was something they did right at the time is I'm laying to borrow the phrase. It's not the Jedi way. It's not. So this did not sit well with me at all, Mm -hmm. but how did you feel? 
Well, it's hard to judge because we don't know everything yet on this. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to decide if it was okay. So the Brash Val, the the first one was taken by Jedi Master Brash that we saw in Charles Soule's comic from the Blade in high, right. Phase Two of the Higher Public, but. The whole concept was introduced in the Darth Vader comic. Master Infala was the Jedi that Vader hunted down to kill and take his kyber crystal to make his own Sith lightsaber. But the point of the Brash Vow is that if you've done something and you're you're attempting to atone and wow. you're removing yourself from the business of the Jedi Order and you spend some of that time in meditation, it's not solely devoted to meditation. It's removing yourselves from the policies and the wills of the Jedi so that you can try and get back into tune with the force and whatever it is, it's like, you know, 10 years later and he still hasn't done it or 16 years later at this point, he still has not reached this atonement here. And so he comes out of it. And to me, it seemed like he was not doing it over any sense of guilt. Like he couldn't live with himself. It was almost like it was an apology to May. And, of course, in the next episode, we'll get a little bit of the backstory about what happened. But that clearly isn't the whole story of what happened. Mm -hmm. And I I think I had the advantage over you of being able to watch all these episodes in a much shorter proximity (laughs) as Mm -hmm. opposed to having to wait for another week in order to get some of that. So, I, you know, I don't like to see anyone commit suicide, but this canonically didn't bother me, I think, as much. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would have to disagree with you on that mm-hmm. one because I just I think about um, characters like Elzar Man, for example, mm-hmm. and, you know, he went through so much as well. And there could have been reasons for him to, you know, consider had had the opportunity presented itself that he might have taken advantage of something like that. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I just feel like this is not like I said, it just doesn't feel like it's the Jedi way. But again, you know, there may be some other things that we don't know about just yet. So, you know, I can't write it off completely. Sure. And I guess my pushback on that would be is like, but does everyone always do everything according to the Jedi way? I mean, you no. know, Anakin surely did not. He murdered younglings. That's not the Jedi way. And he left the mm-hmm. Jedi or he fell to the to the dark side. We've had other, you know, Ahsoka did not live up to the Jedi way. She left the order. Um, and so it is not a typical Jedi thing to do, but I don't think that's unheard of necessarily Mm -hmm. i don't think we've ever seen a jedi commit suicide none comes to mind but plenty of things have have happened where jedi disagreed with the the you know or not necessarily disagreed they fell out of the jedi practice and have done things that were not uh, quote unquote the jedi way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. point taken yeah but so yeah you know um so that's kind of where we get on that one uh you know there is the confrontation between um may and master soul that happens and then we get our flashback episode episode three and it's 16 years prior to everything that we know now we're on the map the world of brindock and we've got mother anisea who's played by Joni turner smith and she's got this coven of witches to which the twins may and osha belong and this is like the eve of their ascension ritual where they're going to basically take their place in the coven. May's all for it. Osha is not so sure. Uh, she wants to go out and do her own thing. And Sol ends up spying on them. And then the Jedi, which consists of Sol, Kanaka, Torben, and Indara show up. And they make some questionable claims about their right to like test potentially force sensitive children and Mm -hmm. how it's not acceptable to be training people in the force. Um, And then this all ends with may not being, she can't accept that. Oh, she doesn't want to become a witch that she wants to go with the Jedi on this. And she sets a fire that we're led to believe kills everybody there at, in this coven. Uh, So what are your thoughts on all this, on this backstory? Well, this episode out of the four that we've gotten so far is by far my favorite. And I know that I'm in the minority on that from what I've seen online, but that's okay. Um, But you know me, I love a good backstory. So I really appreciated the dive into the origin story of these two twins and where they came from and what kind of society they came from and what made them split. 
And so, you know, this, this whole world of Brendock and this coven of witches and the ascension ceremony and everything like that. I mean, it just is for me anyways, just proof in the pudding of how there's just so many different ways to interpret the force throughout the entire galaxy. Because of mm -hmm. course, you know, you have the night sisters and then, you know, you have all of these different sects of force users. And so this is yet just another one of those. Um, obviously for May, she was all about preserving that particular type of quote unquote bloodline, if you will. Mm -hmm. But Osha, not so much. And Osha kind of had her sights to the stars and she appreciated what she thought the Jedi did. And she wanted to pursue that instead. And, um, but, you know, I'm with you in terms of the, the way that, master soul and the rest of the the jedi were like oh we have every right to test this child and basically take take them from you if we think that they are worthy quote unquote enough you know to you know i'm clunking up the words but you know what mm -hmm. i mean sure. and so that really does you know for a lot of people in the galaxy you, we've read and seen how people say oh the jedi are are baby stealers they're children stealers um but that being said it's interesting because they were so much older, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we've been kind of led to believe that children needed to be younger and younger and younger. And I think that maybe this is where that kind of comes from, you know, that, that Yoda being alive at this point in time saw that maybe older children weren't exactly the best <laughs> to, to try to bring into the Jedi order. So maybe that was where it, it went the opposite direction. And so by the time we get to the Phantom Menace and Anakin is quote unquote too old, this is maybe why. See, I, I agree with you. I, but I feel like the, you don't train children that are older is already a rule at this time based on some of the dialogue we had here. I, I wish we had the opportunity to record these as they came out because we could have spent yeah. an hour on this episode alone. I'm with you. This is, this was a fascinating episode. I can't state right now, which one of these episodes was my favorite, but I thought this one was really quite good. Um, you hit on so many of the reasons that are why there, because we had all this mysticism that came around um, the origin of May and Osha and that conversation that mother Sa Anasea had with mother Coral, we need to touch on that in just a second here, but uh, yeah, I mean, this was this was a lot that they packed into here. I kind of felt like the Jedi were a little bit wishy washy in the way they talked to this Coven and Mother Anna say about what their rights are and what they could and they could not do, because they're like, you know, at one point, Indara says, "We will test her with your permission, of course." Well, mm -hmm. it's either you have the right or you don't. I mean, right? And so I was like, okay. Um, so what are you, what are you doing there? And I, I feel like that, that part of the story is something that they are going to touch on again, because it's not like the Jedi at this time were hurting for younglings to train to become future Jedi, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And, but soul was in, you know, we get a, we get a shot of him like spying on May and Asha earlier in this. And it's like they were looking for something in particular almost. And I can't help but wonder if it wasn't the fact that there are these two twins that they suspect of having force abilities that intrigue them mm -hmm. on this. Especially since we are getting tied up in all of this light side, dark side, yin yang type of imagery when it comes to these two as well. I mean, for one, they're always fighting and bickering and stuff like that. And it goes beyond, I think, just like typical children squabbling there. Right. You right. know, Maze desperately wants Osha to come into the cup, but it's, and she gets unreasonably angry when Osha won't do it. You know, when she decides she doesn't want to become one of these witches, she wants to go with the Jedi. And so it, it I don't know. I, I wonder if there wasn't some sort of a notion of the Jedi, you know, there's the prophecy of the chosen one with Anakin. Are we talking about some other prophecy maybe? That soul, you know, as much as Qui Gon believed in the prophecy of the Chosen One, Souls believe, is looking for something in particular, and he thought he found it in Osha and May. Right. Well, you know, and and kind of couple that too with the fact that this entire coven is created through no father. You know, there's the, <sighs> for example, um, Mother Coral was the one that carried the twins, as she said, 
But mm. Mother Anasea is the one that they kind of look to as they, they both, they called them both mother, but I feel like Anasea was the mom. You know what I mean? So perhaps there was some of that in, in there as well from the Jedi Order, kind of wondering, okay, well, how are, how are these children even being incarnated? Was the entire coven created that way or was it just these two? Because I got the impression it was just Osha and May that were okay. Because that and maybe I missed that part. And because the thing is, is that you know, because Coral like says defiantly to Anasea at some point, I carried them. Right. And Anasea's response is, Well, I created them. Mm -hmm. And so it's you know, it seems like there's some sort of force magic going on here that Mother Anasea created them, but then Coral's the one that carried them and gave birth to them. But May and Osha live up to Anasea as, as mom, and they, they carry right. her last name on mm -hmm. that too. It's a it's almost a surrogacy of some kind there. Right. But there's only women there. So that's why I kind of assumed that that was sort of a weird force. Yeah, I hear you. I just kind of got the impression that the rest of them came to this coven from, from elsewhere. And yeah. this is what yeah. made Osha and May unique because there are no other children. And if this is something they could just do, why aren't they doing it? Right. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, too, about the fighting kind of going beyond the quote unquote normal, you know, sibling sort of rivalry. I almost wondered because we knew going into this that there was some huge tragedy that had happened that I, I almost wondered if perhaps there was going to be kind of a Sophie's Choice moment mm -hmm. in this. And we didn't get that. So we know that, yeah. you know, both mothers perished in the fire itself. But and maybe that was one of the impetus type things to why May and Osha didn't get along. Right. And I'm wondering if this coven. And, and I don't know if Leslie Heslin thought of this or Lucasfilm thought of this or what. And or and it's just I'm just noticing similarities. Does this have any ties to the path of the open hand? Oh, interesting. And the reason I point that. I point that out is because they spent all this time talking about the thread and how using the force like impacts things elsewhere. And they're embracing it though, mm -hmm. as opposed to the path of the hand, which is like we don't use the force because what happens here will impact someplace somebody someplace else. Right. And that similarity between these beliefs just jumped out to me. It was just that this coven is not concerned with the consequences of using the force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just that they know there are some. Right. Interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So May loses it, locks Osha in a room, starts a fire, and we're told this fire kills everybody else in the coven. I'm not sure I'm buying that. Are you? No, I don't think so, especially given what we've seen so far of this and what we know about the whole like Russian doll idea kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that, not yeah, to I mention that there's... these people did not look like they were burned to death. Right. Yeah. They were just kind of all in a heap. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, maybe it was smoke inhalation. I don't know, but right. they certainly didn't burn to death. Mm -hmm. And so did the Jedi get in a fight with them? I didn't mm -hmm. know this is necessarily any lightsaber burns, but hey, that's not the only way a Jedi can kill somebody. Sure. Sure. But uh, yeah, I feel like that's talking. another um, part of the story that will get revealed to us later. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Okay. Anything else you want to say about that before we get on to the next episode? Um, no, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Again, if we were doing this on a weekly basis, we'd have a lot more to say, but we're trying right. to cover a lot here in one night. And my voice is not going to last too much longer. So, all right. The, this, this, this week's episode, which is called Day. And... May has uh, gone to what's that? I can't remember the name. Kofor, I think, is the name of the planet that Kilnaka is basically in isolation on. And she's gone there with the intention of killing him. Kamir is with May. Uh, you know, he is this little former smuggler type that is also beholden to this mysterious master. And he's encouraging her. You know, she has to do, you know, she's got to deal with a master and she's got to live up to it. And she has to kill a Jedi without using a weapon, which again, I'm not certain that that's exactly what this master was saying. And so they're trying to find Kofor. Uh, Kimir's already scouted out the way and halfway there may kind of changes her mind and decides that, you know, now that she knows Osha's alive, that's all that's important. She's going to find 
Kilnaka and turn herself in, only to get there and find that Kilnaka has been murdered already. And the Jedi show up just about the same time. And before that confrontation can really happen, the Master shows up, flicks his wrist, or its wrist, and sends Asha flying off. And then as the Jedi uh, charge, it does a giant force push and sends them away. And that's where the episode ends. Where do you want to start on this one? Oh, gosh. Well, one thing that didn't really sit well with me on this one is just how completely like flip of the switch, 180 snap of the fingers that May just turned from I'm all about revenge to, oh, my sister's alive. So everything's okay now and everything's all bright and sunny. I, yeah, that, okay. I understand that the fact that she is alive probably made her happy, but she tried to kill her in the first place. Because of the mm-hmm. fact that she left to go to, to the Jedi. So I'm not, I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also very bummed that Kalnaka met his demise so quickly again mm-hmm. after such a buildup that we had. We're going to get some flashbacks this. with him. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm based sure. Based on trailers that we've seen action that hasn't yeah. happened yet in the show. So yeah, I was a little bummed right. that he died before we got to see him do anything, but right. we are going to exactly. see him do something. So, But we did see a lot of those same markings and um, talismans and things that were from the coven. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that was a unique kind of a tie-in there as well. So, And obviously, May had never been there, so someone else from her coven had. Or Kanaka just remembered him and did it himself. Oh, perhaps. Which- Yep, that's I, okay. I didn't consider. Yeah. Okay. So this episode was clunky when it came down to it. I agree yes. with you that the the flip. I don't know that it necessarily didn't sit well with me, but I, it was clunky and it was fast on that, and it was not particularly well reasoned. And the way they presented to us, this is one of the things that kind of reminded me of some of George Lucas's clunky dialogue when it came down to it. There was a plot point that they were trying to achieve. I'm not sure they did the greatest job getting there. But it suggests that May's been fed a lie on this, that whoever this master is convinced her that the Jedi are responsible for everything that happened with Coven and the Jedi are responsible for Asha's demise. And that's not the case. And she's had this realization and it's, you know, and for her, it's the, wait a minute, I was in this to get revenge on the Jedi, but things aren't what I thought they were. But I feel like I just said that a whole lot clearer than this episode did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, maybe that could have been revised and made a little bit clearer. Um, yeah, you're being very gracious with yeah. this, ep- much more gracious with this episode than than I am, of course. But okay. I just, I don't know. For me, it's just like, okay, May, she wanted to kill Osha because mm-hmm. she was going, it was almost like, you know, yeah, that was throwing out years the, ago. Yeah, throwing out the baby with the bathwater kind of a thing is where she was with that. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm yeah. forgiving of that plot point because they were kids and mm-hmm. she was being impulsive mm-hmm. and who wouldn't have regrets and feel guilt mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. And, you, and so, you know, that's why she's coming over to these Jedi because they kind of forced everything. If the Jedi hadn't shown up, she wouldn't have had that confrontation because sure. there would have been no Osha leaving to go with the Jedi because that, that wouldn't have been a possibility. No, Asha may not want to join the coven, but she still wouldn't have left with the Jedi. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, all good points. Yep. But I feel like, okay, I'm going to be really disappointed if this master turns out to be Kamira. And I feel mm. like they're, and I kind of feel like that's something that's being teased a little bit. And it almost seems like it's too obvious a red herring, if you know what I mean. Now that you point it out, I I can see where you're going with that. I hadn't considered that, mm-hmm. um, but it does make sense. Yeah. You know, I, and here's the thing, you know, here's the argument in favor of this master being Kamir. Kamir said he scouted out and figured out where Kilnaka lived. And so he knew how to get there. Then, you know, he also is talking about what is the master wants. He seems to have a very good idea of what the master wants. And even though he's selling it, it's like, oh, the master collects people. You know, he's collected May and he's collected Kamir. You know, because May asks, like, what are you doing? You know, working for him. He's like, oh, he he's gotten into me. He he collects people. But then May traps him, and we don't see him again. But all of a sudden, the master's there. 
Mm-hmm. So it, they're, they're creating an awful lot of conveniences in order mm-hmm. to do this. And, and, I, and to me, it seems almost too obvious. Yeah. Uh, when it when it comes down to it, and especially when they're talking about this, you know, this isn't going to go the way you think type of thing when it comes to the show. Um, that being said, I don't know who the master could be. Is it one of the witches from the coven? Is it Mother Anasaya herself? Um, you know, that's a possibility. But mm-hmm. I feel like whoever this master is, since they're going to such great pains to keep their identity secret, they almost have to comply with one of the golden rules of mysteries where it has to be someone we've already met. Ah. Uh, uh, otherwise, I, I it, yeah, I mean, otherwise, because it's it's not like this is set during the original trilogy and it could be some character that we're aware of as Star Wars fans, but ah, there you go. You know, it, it in order for this mystery to pay off, it can't just be somebody random. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it's kind of like a oh by the way yes um, Senator Palpatine has been Darth Sidious the whole time kind of thing someone that's yeah. been right under our nose yes and that mm-hmm. works mm-hmm. but it, you know there's there's a golden rule of uh, of mysteries that comes from you know Agatha Christie and others of those and that you typically have to meet your murderer or the person that's behind everything early on in the story somewhere early enough in the story that it can't be introduced at someone's last second. And then there it is because you have to give the audience a fair chance to figure out what's going on or follow mm-hmm. the clues. You can't have someone figure this out based off of off screen, off page information. Okay. And you're maybe asking, what does Agatha Christie got to do? This? this is a mystery show. It's it Star is. Wars, but it's mm-hmm. a Star Wars mystery. And so you have to follow some of those same rules. And so it seems like, you know, Maybe there's clever writers out there and they could figure out how to introduce somebody new and make it pay off for us. You know, it could be one of the other Sith Lords that preceded uh, Palpatine and uh, Plagueis and, you know, or Tenebrous for that matter. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in order for it to work as this type of mystery, it has to be somebody we've met. Mm -hmm. Um, It can't be a Maroc from Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I do agree. Yep. So we'll see what happens there. Good points. But um, but yeah, so you know that kind of gets us through the four episodes on a very, very high level. And we'll sp- definitely spend more time on episode five individually <laughs> when we get there <laughs> next week. But uh, any, other, any other thoughts on the Acolyte before we wrap it up? Well, it, it, as usual, it did really help to break this down and have some discourse about these episodes as far as, you know, again, just like trying these shoes on these new shoes Mm -hmm. on for size um you know there's there's definitely still some growing pains with this series for me um Mm -hmm. and that's okay you know it's it's one of those things that we've always said that just because it's star wars doesn't mean that we have to absolutely be in love with it from the get-go and that i'm i am very eager to see how the rest of this series plays out but what about you it's an intriguing show. Um, it's one of these that, since it is a mystery, that it, for me, it's really going to take all the episodes before I can judge the whole thing, mm-hmm. because none of them are really capable of standing on their own. For the, like, with the exception of maybe episode three, right? Because that no, did I tell a, a tell a story. The rest of them are really going to be dependent on the outcome of this whole thing. Whereas you look at Ahsoka, for instance, you know the um shadow warrior episode taken by itself is a phenomenal episode Mm -hmm. and it's not dependent on the rest of the series in order to be great where i feel like a lot of these episodes are the sum of the whole is gonna be greater than you know the individual parts so no i totally agree yeah so we'll we'll see but uh but i'm I'm eager to find out more uh i'm uh, and to get some more pieces for for that mystery resolved for us yes i totally agree with that as well okay okay well so it seems like we're in on this but we're reserved yes (laughs) that's fair that is a very fair yes assumption yeah okay well yeah and i encourage people to check it out and uh, and so we can all enjoy the mystery together and uh you know we'll be talking about this more in more depth next week but we just have so much to catch up on you know we're we're high on our monthly features with the Phantom Menace and World Between Worlds and everything. We're trying to get caught up on those, and then we'll be able to spend a little bit more time on the Acolyte for the final four episodes. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
But with that said, thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Pi- of Podcast Stars and our discussion of the beginning of the Acolyte. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to get our takes on the remaining episodes, then make sure you've subscribed to the podcast. You know how to do that on your podcast of your choice, and you'll get all of those episodes as they appear, one per week. I'd also like to remind you that you can find our entire catalog of past shows, all previous 744 of them, over at RetroZap.com, which is home to a bunch of other great podcasts covering all kinds of things. And again, uh, if you've appreciated the show and you want to do something for us, the best thing you can do is to leave a five-star rating review on your podcast of choice, especially if that's Apple Podcasts. And the other, the next best thing you can do is to share the show on social media with your friends. So, Jay, how does everybody do that? Well, everybody can do that very easily on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Podcast Artist. And you can also hit us up on our many other social media outlets, including Pinterest, YouTube, and YouTube Music. So head over to all of those, like, subscribe, and share those out with your friends. And we also have a Discord room where you can hit us up for some real-time chatter. The link to that is in our show notes, as well as our Tee Public store, which has seven different show logo designs available for Podcast Artist. So you can get tote bags to take to the beach. You can get wall hangings, t-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, all kinds of fun stuff. And the link for that is also in our show notes. And we are still collaborating with Saber Master. So if you are in need of a lightsaber to fight off the mysterious Sith Lord, you can head over to sabermasters.com and you can check out one of lots and lots of different lightsabers that they have over there. And if you do happen to pick anything up, make sure when you add to cart that you also add the code STARDUST at checkout. And that will earn you an extra $10 off of your purchase. And it also helps to support the show. So the link to that will be in our show notes. And once again, you can also head to sabermasters.com. So with that, Dennis, why don't you fill everybody else up on what's going on with you and your other internet trappings? I know you've had some other things going on with travel, as everyone knows, but uh, what you got going on? All right. So my wife and I are talking Star Trek over on Warp Trails, which is a Retroset podcast feed exclusive. Um, we have a few episodes left in season five of discovery that we haven't got to. We are, uh, trying to figure out how to catch up on that. It may just be, end up being one catch up episode. Uh, we'll see, but we got a little bit more travel to go through. So who knows, but we want to definitely want to talk about that. We're, we are a few episodes behind a lot of that, uh, concluded while we were on vacation. So there you go. So if you like Star Trek, you like discovery, you like lower deck, strange new worlds or Picard, head over to Zap and check out the show. Jay. Um, I know you have a new uh, elf fairy type cosplay that looks really good on. Uh, so why don't you tell everybody about that and everything else you got going on? Oh, thank you. So yes, um, cosplay, just when I say, oh, I'm going to take it easy with cosplay, I'm like squirrel and something else happens to come up. So you can check out all of my cosplay adventures on my Instagram, which is at j.snipscosplay. So you can check out all of my my previous and current, such as Ahsoka, two different forms of Hera, one from Rebels, one from the Ahsoka series, my fourth sister Inquisitor, my original concept Mandalorian and Dennis, as you were just alluding to, um, I got an opportunity to go to a Fae masquerade as part of a, an event that I helped with rubber city cosplay here in Akron. And so it was my first time dressing as a Fae slash fairy and I loved it. So I am embracing that. And so you can check that new cosplay out on my Instagram at j.snipscosplay. All right. So upcoming on the show this Monday, we get back into our Phantom Menace series for the 25th anniversary of that movie. And then on Wednesday, Jay is rounding up Star Wars fashion and lifestyle products in World Between Worlds. So thanks for listening to episode 745 of Podcast Stardust. Have a great weekend. And until next time, may the force be with you.